this is the uh, nephew observability meetings on, well, I guess I put it on, on Pacific time, uh, February 19th, 2024. <laughs> and yeah, I didn't, I didn't really publish an agenda, but then I guess it's kind of goes without saying that we are, I mean, it, it, well, first of all, does anyone have anything they want to talk about before we get started? A quick point from my side, you know, I'm uh, one of the chairs for uh, SIG Security. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw this uh, meeting invite, meeting on the calendar uh, mm -hmm. page, and uh, I was quite interested because security and observability becomes, oh, goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So I was quite interested in understanding what's happening here. So hence okay. I joined. Great. Looking forward. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, just, well, we've had a, a number of ad hoc meetings before then. Um, and uh, this is because I, well, we, we were obviously we're in our three development cycle now. So we, we decided to make this a little more recurring meeting. Um, and then hopefully some folks will be picking up things. So we, uh, we can get things moving. And this is the only nephew meeting, which is, 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 is very friendly to the time. Friendly. That I am <laughs> yeah. Non-friendly to us, <laughs> non-friendly <laughs> to us, but kind of friendly to hopefully everyone else um, yeah yeah i can tell we i don't we don't i mean as far as i know so far we haven't with the with the discussion uh a slack channel we haven't had like a, a lot of u.s folks overly interested I, I think they're interested um but then i guess contributors or, or or folks that are interested to contribute um they are not really in u.s <laughs> so Okay, so let's get started. Um, we okay. So as I as I posted on the um, on the Slack channel, um, I file a bunch of issues, and I file an epic, and then group a bunch of issues behind that. Um, and there are, there were some, there were, there were, there, there were several discussions already. So I, I hopefully those are not overly, uh, um, strange to folks on what this is. Um, so there, for all three, I added this like right before the meeting. So this is very early. I wouldn't, I, I would say that we probably have to extend the user stories a little bit, but so far, um, so we had we had one major user potentially um, on surface assurance. Um, they they're, they are they rely a lot on the observability framework, um, and I mean to be honest, we're not essay actually lands in L three. We're not sure, um, but then at the very least, um, we have some input on what they actually what what you. Uh, do at the same time we had um, very simple and preliminary uh, uh, request by saying that there's that's the fact that R one R two uh, if something gone wrong there's there's no there's no visibility into what actually went wrong so I think I think that was a direct ask from Bala um, and I think I think that's fair because it is true uh, and then so so that's that's also something we have to actually sort of worry about. Uh, beyond this, um, um, I think we kind of promised that that um, the applications or users can s specify what they want to monitor. Uh, but that's not like a wildcard because obviously we we our visibility on the field the system is um, is basically an NF deployment at this point. Um, so we are we, in terms of what kind what kind of things we want to actually look at uh, it, it's based sort of on what we can actually deploy so we, we're deploying the granularity of a nf deployment instance uh, so we we should be able to a group all the visibility data off of an nf deployment instance whatever that actually becomes um, and and be able to use that as like the lowest granularity that we can go 
of the finest granularity that we can go. Um, that wouldn't we wouldn't be able to go like deeper to like oh let's ping into an interface. I mean that information if it's available it will be it will be grouped under an NFT appointments and then exposed. Uh, but then you know the system aren't really aware of an interface name per se. Um, there's a request of a data lake um, that was way earlier, like several months ago, um, when when we're talking about what what should we when we a how do we scrap the data and then how do we present the data um, and and one of the ask was um, we we do want to get all the data together uh, in unstructured format uh, so that's the data lake um, and and then and then so normal ways to build well I mean there, there's not normal ways but then the more conventional way of building a data lake um, people put like Spark SQLs on top of that or things like this. Um, so, so we we still kind of put it into a dummy table, and then be able to 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 um, to query this. But obviously, if we if we collect data, we got to have a way to expose that data. Um, so, so there has to be some way for you for for users to be able to get into it, get 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 a information of what is actually going on. Um, in so there, obviously, we are. Um, leveraging as much as possible things like Prometheus and and Jaeger and and FluentDs to get logs and traces and and metrics uh, as a collector, um, and each of those have their own querying uh, languages uh, on top, which is still SQL like. Um, and the the idea would be: um, Do we expose each of these collectors and allow uh, uh, applications to individually able to? Use the conventional uh, language by those collectors uh, to be able to get it to be able to get the data, or we are managing it such that there will be a more con more standard way, more uniform way to do this. Um, there's no answer at this point, so so we'll it's pretty unspecified. Um, and then, uh, but then we, we we have to have a way to expose it, obviously, <laughs> and then and then. Subscribe to changes. So, so there, there are certain things that we should be able to say. Oh, if a change happens, um, we should um, alert um, the subscriber. Um, there was an ask, I think, directly from SA saying that if a certain metrics fall under certain thresholds, uh, let them know. Um, I don't know how advanced we can do this, um, but then there's something to keep in mind, um, and um, and then. Obviously, there's just time A to time B. Get me all the informations that you have. Is pretty standard. Um, and then, and then we will additionally want an operators to be able to subscribe or be able to get a, a visibility data because um, they, the the NF operator itself may actually use that to determine uh, whether or not they they're meeting a particular uh, status, or whether not, or whether or not they have to take actions to reconcile. Um, so with that, um, the first thing to do is um, is getting the data, scrapping the data from um, from the NF. Uh, and for folks who have experience with Free Five GC, um, there's really not much to grab. Uh, they don't. They don't really expose much uh, on Free Five GC. The only the only thing we know of, anyway, is um, they they have a um, they have a REST API to get subscriber related information. Um, so there's no like, uh, yeah. So this is basically because they have a they have some sort of UI, uh, and then and then that the web UI whatever API the web UI consumes is pretty much the the only API that we know of. That can they can get information about free five GC. Um, in well, OAI isn't a lot better. I heard. I, I I don't know that much about OAI, so I can I don't I don't want to say that for sure. Um, but uh, but then I I did hear from um, from Subash, the the the, the SA uh, lead, uh, that there is a and a work items from Sagar uh, uh, Saga's uh, side that he's gonna he's gonna build a little more um, data. Uh, more observability data uh, off of OAI, so so that that basically conversely means that it's actually not really available yet at this point. Um, 
and that's probably it's going to be true for most of the open source thing. Um, and so for us, we um, we had a lot of uh, the bulk of our discussions actually uh, for a while was uh, uh, particularly Martin, who's not here today. Uh, uh, he's he's actually been checking out, investigating what could be done uh, in the system uh, to, to, to get more information off of um, network functions in general. So they're, they're in the very beginning, lo a lo long time ago, we, I was proposing creating a, a generic sidecar. So you'll be getting information off, um, getting information, well, CPU memory utilization is actually just part of Kubernetes. You should get that. Um, and then, and then, you know, can you get information about how many sessions are being established on that particular uh, container? Uh, and you can get the packet counts. Uh, if you if you're a sidecar, you can do IF config because it's on the same namespace. So you'll see the secondary interfaces also, and you'll be able to get the uh, the count of the packet count or byte counts, and then and then and then snap it into different data at uh, different times, which gets us into some sort of basic throughput. Uh, calculations. So those are the ideas that I think I even um, uh, presented during the summit uh, last year. Um, uh, Marson actually came back and said that there are a number of little things, a number of tools that could be used um, that he, uh, and I haven't assigned it to him yet, but uh, but then he's, he's been investigating that part. Um, and then he hasn't volunteered himself yet, anyway. Um, and then and then that that would be the first thing. So we'll 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 give at least. I'm not saying then. So Nephew should create a baseline, a Linux based things at least, um, that would allow us to get information like number of sessions, off the port that we are actually interested in, um, and the packet count uh, of a particular interface on a pod, or on on a container, in a pod, um, the then that becomes more like a baseline uh, things that we can generate by ourselves. Um, whether or not network functions would use them or uh, other, other functions would use them uh, is not of importance in this case. We just, want to, we just want to have a very basic set where we are saying, uh, um, if you use this, and then we, 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 we may be using PPF and some other things too moving forward. Um, it's probably not going to be a sidecar at the end. Uh, if you use this, at the very least, we have a. We we know that at the very least, as nephew observability, uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll get these data, off of uh, any generic uh, any uh, network functions, a uh, generic networking data, off of this, if you're running on Linux, which is usually the case. Um, and so that's that's one of the items um, that, you know. Oh, go ahead, Pieter. Oh, hi, hello. Uh -huh. um, hello. I believe here we have to remember that you can have different type of data. First of all, you can expect that the vendors will use, for example, uh, open telemetry, let's say, API, mm -hmm. SDK to instrument the, the network functions, and it will be the intrusive uh, monitoring or instrumentation, and you probably would like to gather the data. And the second approach you mentioned, for example, using ABPF as mm -hmm. a non-intrusive solution. And uh, do you see to, to make use of both sources or uh, you don't care about uh, metrics who, which will be provided out of the box? I mean, it's, it's really hard. I mean, because the vendor, Depending on the vendor, you can have different metrics provided, but somehow mm -hmm. you need to take into account that they will be there. Free five D C expose nothing, like you said. Yeah. But it's it will be not the case at the end. Yeah, so so we 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 are the motivations for us doing this obviously is because free five G gives us nothing. And then that's our that's our default, if you will, default implementation. Uh, so we we do we do need to grab something. The the, the good side of that is uh, if we if it's well designed, then whether or not other network function vendors will use it, probably maybe 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 not, because obviously network function vendors commercial products have much better um, exposing of data. Um, 
But then for those who doesn't have it, at least we'll have a baseline of what we have. And then as a reference implementations, we'll show people that we can, we can do something with the data that we can get out of this, even though it's very generic. Um, and then the other part is the exposing part. Um, we obviously, as for some of you folks knows, we, we already talked about using OTEL interfaces as a, um, as a way to instrument. If we, if we are going to, well, one of them is just sending metrics out to, 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 to Prometheus or some other collectors, so that's okay. Uh, the other one would be if you use open tracing type um, APIs, uh, if you want to generate trace data. So those are, those are some of the pieces that we are thinking of doing uh, moving forward. Yeah, but then, you know, I mean, at this point, this is more like because it, we are, we are we're facing a network functions that doesn't really, doesn't really have any basic things to expose. Um, we would like to create a data scrapping, data gathering uh, um, engine um, that, is, that would, we'll be using anyway for, um, for, for the purpose of showing the framework works. Um, so that was, that's the main purpose at this point. Yeah, sure. One more comment, uh, because mm -hmm. I, I guess you someone has a hand up, but uh, regarding the open telemetry, I'm in mm -hmm. the middle of kind of the research. Uh, and I, I can see that, for example, the auto instrumentation, it's, it's really dependent on the language your application mm -hmm. is written. So uh, as I know, out of the box for the Go-based microservices, uh, mm -hmm. Auto instrumentation is not here. I mean, I I saw that there is a tool which is using eBPF to auto instrument such network functions. But uh, as I remember last time we discussed to omit the eBPF at this point. The question is if it will be reasonable to omit that. Is it reasonable to omit? What, uh, which, which one? So we, if we, so we are, you, you're talking about the language limitations because it's more powerful if you use Golang at this point. Is that what yeah, I'm asking talking? about the eBPF. If we yeah. are going to have some kind of mechanism to use EB, eBPF at the mm -hmm. first proof, proof of concept or? Yeah, so if, if that's, yeah, yeah. So if this is what, uh, whoever would want you to take this on, um, they have the freedom to to investigate technologies uh, and and contribute with that technologies. So if we're using BPF, um, then the expectations here requirement would be using BPF to get the set of data, and then we, we we can refine this a little further than just those three, obviously. Um, and then and then in terms of uh, sending it out, exposing it, um, and then in terms of the R three scope. Um, whether or not we'll do more than just metrics, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but then if it's, if, let's say, at the very least, uh, um, able to be collected by an hotel collector um, would be would, would basically be the basic requirements. So if, if it's, so the, if you use a BPF, obviously it's not a application side because that would, that requires a, um, a, 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 a read privileged for you to download BPF program. Um, so we would basically um, expose it as a either host uh, tools to be installed by the infra provider, or it is a, a privileged uh, a daemon set that is also owned by infra providers, but they, they, have, they, have, to, they have to launch it off, off of a cluster. Um, we can, either one is fine, I think. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Okay. Rahu, go ahead. Hey, uh, so I, I, my my question is a little bit at a higher level. Like you know, yeah. okay. I saw two tickets here. Uh, one mm -hmm. is in the context of workload observability, and mm -hmm. the other in the in this context, I see uptime or Kubernetes resource or deployment observability. Right, like these are the two things that I see currently on the table. Uh, then there are a bun bunch of other things, right? Like like what gets used under under the hood whether it's ebpf whether it's sidecar whether uh, something the application it has a way of uh, uh, emitting the telemetry all of these things would 
would happen later right like first of all is the scope actually is 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 there has there been a discussion about what should be part of the uh, r3 scope or is this the discussion where that that discussion is happening right now is is application workload observability that we are we are targeting is uptime kubernetes service uh, or deployment observability that we are looking towards is security observability that 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 is primarily important or is performance observability and monitoring that is primarily of concern uh, and the will it will it will it will it be different for management clusters and will it be different for or the scope includes edge and regional clusters and uh, the kind of requirements we really which clusters we want to uh, you know so is 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 there is there has there been any discussion in the context because you mentioned Stefan that you know uh, that there has this is this discussions have been uh, started like since last year so I was wondering whether there has oh so yeah 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 so so the um so so initially initially the the reason why I'm I'm actually even kicking this off in the first place um initially there was a requirement of um, basically the only one requirement in the beginning, uh, uh, gathering all the statuses off of all the deployments. So, so that, that's how it started, because uh, Google actually seeded that code um, back in around our one time frame. And, and to be honest, the community hated that code <laughs> um, uh, for good reason. I mean, there, there, there's some parts that just simply doesn't work. Um, because you know there, there there's some GCP related framework that that we leverage on the Zico. We think that we'll do something different on our uh, VM based systems and container lab based systems. Uh, but then the the um, the feedback, particularly from from Vim, because he kind of owns the container lab piece, uh, is that this is 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 much more difficult to do on the network plumbing side. Um, so so I said, like, oh, okay, so we'll do something different, <laughs> um, and then we don't know what's different is. Uh, but then that that becomes a way to extend by saying that oh how do we get all the um, all the statuses uh, off of different uh, clusters uh, all the different uh, NF operators basically in this case all all, all the NF deployment uh, instances sitting on the edge clusters um, so that's our first level of visibility if it is so now once you do that uh, a you, if you solve the problem of how do you get something back to the management clusters, then the next question anyone would ask would be, oh, can you stream metrics off of that? Um, you know, because usually on, a, on an Edge class, uh, on usually on an Edge uh, system, you don't do a full bloom uh, uh, Prometheus uh, deployment. Someone would like to centrally uh, get all the metrics. Um, and, and so that's the, the second question. So it becomes more like a workload related things. Uh, that's mostly, um, it becomes more like a workload related application related uh, uh, visibility data gathering uh, is, is what we're, was being asked. Obviously, observability by itself, as you said, it's a lot of it, it, the scope is pretty high. It's pretty large. Right. Of what it's supposed to gather. Um, uh, I think last last meeting, uh, Kieran, who's actually has his end up, was asking, oh, are we doing visibilities into the NAFIO system? Um, you know, if, if something fail, when you know, in this in the software, when you know, we'll be able to, to gather this. So 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 it goes into different layers. Uh, at this point, based on discussions, based on the fact that one use case uh, heavily rely on observability, so maybe that is actually a priority. Which is uh, the the SA the, the the service assurance folks were asking us to at least get throughput data because the the, the number one use case is basically just getting. Uh, uh, bandwidth adjustments and things like that, uh, and and we were so the the only question is, oh, do we can we get information about throughput changes on the threshold? So that was that was the the, uh, the ask for us. Uh, for me, I, I try to get status, and then if the status have some changes um, on so a hey, NF deployment status is very light, so I, I hope it's actually much more powerful than that, uh, but it's not. So, but then if there's any changes, uh, we would be able to say, hey, let's go into everything that pertains to this NF deployment. Uh, uh, can we get all those data and then and then be able to display that so that people, a human can update or some other, some other application can, can, can debug, a human, a human or some other application debug. So, so that's, that's one. Uh, there has been some ask 
about at least can we figure out what's going on if um, we fail to deploy it, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. And I think I think Bala sort of try to Bala yeah. is asking for that, and then I think it's fair. Um, the observability as a subgroup, uh, as a as a task force, I guess we didn't we didn't we didn't launch for that purpose. We thought it would be more like a Nephew system problem, um, but then we probably would have frameworks that allow us to, for example, uh, gather logs and and um, and statuses from uh, Porch. Um, using the same same kind of mechanisms, uh, so it is it is hopefully help, but I think you probably need a lot more than that for 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 system debugging. Um, yeah, but anyway, so 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 hopefully that answers your question. So we're we're looking more for for the for the workload uh, metric. Yeah, so that that's out. what I heard. So you you started with network functions, mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you, you said network functions, but you also at some point in time mentioned uh, Bala's requirement about observing the deployments itself, whether the deployments were successful in the edge clusters. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on the management clusters, I'm not sure if if, if if we have any specific requirement, but then service assurance is one of the requirements as, as they can see in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, so so uh, th th then it basically, so so service, this the, 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 the document that is mentioned in the chat, uh, Varda, it's, it's about service assurance itself, or is it about... Uh, the observability so the question is have have we is there any document where we have uh, have the scope uh, mentioned right now uh, like like the user story template document or any other document which says yeah, that you I know mean, from the observability sure. perspective xyz okay yeah I mean, there there there's something written uh but then i mean i i can i can share that um there's something Thank written you. in there's something written more of like um more of a presentation format because I just want to get the get the subgroup kick off. Um, so, I mean, compared to Got it. SDK, it, it's not it's not as detailed in terms of documentations. But I'm I'm hoping by gathering folks together, we can we can probably we can we can get a a much better read of the scope of what it is. I'm, I'm trying to sketch the user story off of this, um, and 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 the, the 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 major user, as I said, was the SA. Uh, at this point, but then it didn't start off as serving as a, uh, but then it hopefully just it, it's getting evolved to a point where hopefully can address the the SA sub teams uh, uh, concerns. So just one more minor comment, and then I'll stop. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. Uh, just just so even for the security working group, uh, the SIG right security SIG, there is a lot of dependency on this particular work item because mm -hmm. there is a lot of telemetry and alerts information that is going to get flown out of that. Uh, out of all the systems that we're going to build, right? Like if mm -hmm. it is secrets management or whatever it is, right? Like if mm -hmm. it's it's going to cause alerts and telemetry that will be flown into into this this modules here. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. You know, so so we are we the, the big thing is setting up the framework, right? So it doesn't. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it would it would okay. be able to leverage by by other. Um, Perfect. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Kieran, do you have do you have something because you had your hand up and then you you put it down. Yeah, I guess the conversation drifted off this particular issue that's up on the uh, on the screen, so I didn't want to necessarily jump back to it, but I'll mention it now anyway. I guess um, here we are talking about correlating because a workload isn't necessarily, or an NF deployment isn't necessarily just like a single microservice or mm -hmm. uh, could be groups of microservices, many pods, many different um, network uh, connections and so on. So I presume we're taking into consideration being able to correlate the data from those individual lower level Kubernetes resources up to the Mm -hmm. The individual not few components is that where the 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 edge yeah, that's, about, that's, guess, yeah, that would be that would be one of the things in Kubernetes data. Yes, that we want to do. If we if we gather those data, we correlate those data with um with an NF deployment, basically, right? So this is this is the result of you pushing down an NF deployment uh, for something other than three five GCs. That probably means a lot of different parts uh, uh, across different nodes. Um, and then, and then, and those data would have to be kind of aggregated and telling you that uh, for your particular NF that is deployed, whether succeed or not, um, they are for 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 all the across all the different nodes and all the different pods and containers that that it hits. Uh, these are the data that we actually gathered. Again, we don't, we don't do anything with the data; it's just data. 
yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, but I was just wondering if it's worth calling that out in the user story, or, or maybe I should add a comment on that or something. Or... Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, we can call it out. Okay. Um, and there is actually a free FreeFactGC data <laughs> that you can scrap, that's what I said earlier. Um, the, the subscriber related things um, is something you can gather from API, from the API servers, there's a service that's embedded inside a, a free file juicy deployment. So that actually overlooks the, the entire deployment, but mainly you actually just talk to AM, AMF. Um, and, then, and then all the logs of all the different NFs that we can deploy, if you have 10, 12 NFs that we deployed for full free file GC. Um, we that was actually quite useful for us, at least for Zim and I, when we when we trying to make a call going. Um, so this is also something good to um, to gather. Uh, Marcin was asking when uh, we can we can um, we will do something to to a structure log. You know, we're we not we're not doing that. We just want to make the data available. Um, not so much you know, doing doing anything to analyze it at this point. Uh, so these are the. The basic ones in terms of let's having something exposing data, um, because we we're, we're lacking that in the first place. Um, the second one, which is a bit of a story, so this is an epic with stories. So this is this is basically a story, and then stories not in this call. Um, deploy the data collectors uh, is one of this particular stories. Um, you know any of the standard. CNCF ones that we, we can we can deploy. I think that's probably the the things that Otel probably has support already. Um, and then and then we'll 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 push it into mainly management clusters. But then if you want to fill in bits, you can put in a wearable cluster too. Um, and or if you, if you do a collector, um, which is which is an actual Otel implementation of the collector, um, you can put that onto. Um, Onto the the, the the world clusters too. So again, whoever takes on this can make a decisions on seeing how we want to deploy the collectors, and we're going to use we use it more of a star hub, uh, a hub spook architecture, where all the workload clusters just stream things over uh, and have one central collector. Or we have some other uh, workload cluster specific collectors that do something. Um, we can we can sort of decide as we go. And then we'll have to find a ways to expose that data to a workload cluster. Um, so this is actually a um, an interesting problem that we have not solved yet at this point, which is uh, we have we have the geek repo to 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 write to so that the workload clusters uh, would be getting config intent uh, from management cluster, uh, but then we 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 never actually devise a feedback loop. Uh, a path, so we as of writing, we still don't really have it. Um, so that would be that would be some way that we, as a community, and, and definitely one of the major uh, contribution from the observability subgroup um, is to is to basically create a more standard way uh, for this feedback data to send back um, to uh, to management cluster. Yeah, go ahead, Rahul. Hey, uh, Stephen. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is an interesting discussion because you know this mm -hmm. is this is one of the use cases that is getting discussed in the six security as to mm -hmm. uh, you know, when it comes to sharing resources across management cluster, worker cluster, and between worker clusters as well as the edge clusters as well. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Vamshi, can you please mute? Vamshi, we're getting background noise from your side. Thank you. Uh, uh, so what happens is. Uh, what is the way in which we can identify a workload wants access to a particular management cluster, right? Like let's say, for example, a resource access or a permission access, right? Like, so, so mm -hmm. that, that is fundamentally getting discussed as part of workload identity mm -hmm. in SIG security. Mm -hmm. And I feel, you know, so all the other aspects, like, you know, there are secrets that are getting shared yes. uh, and all, uh, all the, the, this also is relevant to the same discussion is all mm -hmm. I want to highlight and, yeah. and see yeah. that, yes, there is some discussion. Yeah, so, 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 so the, there's a, I would rely on SIGSAC to tell us, you know, what it, what is whether or not that actually passes the emissions, the the security compliance and and our standards of security, so security standards for our for the project on this. Um, yeah. So for us, we also know for sure 
that you're not creating um, channels uh, between parts and all that stuff between application yeah. parts. There has to be yeah, some yeah. funneling uh, between two parties. Yes. There has to be talk, and then and then they have to authenticate, have to handshake. Not only that, uh, they would also emission controls on locally on the clusters to make sure that oh, uh, this workload uh, we can gather something, or this workload can send something to to the to the management cluster. Uh, to this particular application that is that is gathering. Correct. Um, yeah. uh, we don't we don't just open it up as a as a as an open channel to have, to have everyone just keep on. Keeping no, on. no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's, that's <laughs> awesome. so. There are two there are two proposals actually that are getting discussed in okay. Six Security. The, the the hope is that by the end of this month we will reach out to RX uh, scope and uh, this thing and then discuss in, in in that particular channel as to okay. what would be the right model. Okay. But then but then in terms of this is more like a security security way, or do you do you actually are already designing? Uh, are you folks already making uh, proposals on the the how, meaning the plumbing, the networking aspects, or the so, so the first is the model. Uh, so yeah. that that model is something that we are clarifying right now, and mm -hmm. then the how part. There is there is some discussion about how part as well, but mm -hmm. we we are not we are not uh, picking up unless and until we get a. A handshake from other SIGs on whether the model itself is okay to to, to follow yeah. because it has impact across uh, across multiple. So this systems. is this is the part where the Google seed code, the Google seed code is 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 making trouble. <laughs> um, oh. the, um, yeah. So that that's the reason why that seed code wasn't so widely accepted, I guess, by the community. Uh, part of this is because so how how the Google seed code does it is that it's um, it monitors the clusters creations uh, and then immediately there is a uh, module in uh, in in management clusters this um, uh, edge watcher um, that would send out the IP address of 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 the gRPC server basically that that sits on management clusters uh, through the uh, through the uh, um, the deployment repo so we 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 so some configuring applies that and there's a watcher uh, on that rep, uh, on that inf, on, on that resource and then they 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 know the IP address endpoint IP address well, endpoint of how to send something back to the um, to the management cluster. So we open up like a gRPC channel to go to go through this. Um, so a um, well we don't have a DNS server on Nephio, so the, so so it is an IP address. It's not it's not a name um, and then. And then the um, the tricky part of that is um, you know no one well so so for the Google uh, uh, solutions um, the we we created a VPN link so it's basically just a pod IP off of that guy uh, it's a little easier to do so because um, you know the the particular solutions creates a channel that that the VPN routers would expose IP addresses. From the clusters, and then it's it's like cluster IPs that send to each other. So it's a routable IP, um, and then but then in terms of plumbing, this case is not something we in in term, in, in container uh, lab uh, we're having trouble trying to try to wire this. Um, so that's that's one. The second one is obviously no one cares about security <laughs> in this case <laughs> when we open up that channel. Um, so so there 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 there's several concerns there. So 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 now that's why this becomes a Work items that um, that well we need more than anyone else first uh, for for observability because sending something back is 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 our basic needs uh, for observability side um, and and we would definitely have to actually expose to a wider to a community once we 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 kind of make a design decision on our side but then obviously we have to consult the exact of uh, 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 SIG also to make sure that we are we we are compliance with the security standards. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Pietro, go ahead. Uh, so I, I would like to comment uh, this mm -hmm. and the previous uh, task regarding the collectors okay. uh, to be conformant with, with open telemetry. You mm -hmm. can have uh, the open telemetry supports the hierarchical uh, orchestration of the collectors, right? You could have if you need it, you could have sidecars in the network functions. You could have other collectors per node, per node or per, per cluster, and uh, right. they can communicate. Mm -hmm. And at the end, the last collector could push the data 
to the so-called backend. It could mm -hmm. be remote backend or the mm -hmm. local backend, even uh, okay. let's say Prometheus for for metrics, uh, fluent bit for logs or Jaeger for traces, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe it's, I mean, this mechanism is, and it's really important to make sure we'll be conformal with the uh, security. I mm -hmm. don't know how to that shift, mm -hmm. but uh, to to I don't, maybe service mesh or something like that. I'm not sure if you would like to introduce some dependency to have a service mesh uh, around clusters. But uh, at the end, all you need to do I I know it's simplifying the problem, but all you need to do is to make sure that you are able to to reach the fully qualified domain name. And in the open telemetry, you have the exporters, you have backends. Mm -hmm. So the mechanism to share the data, it's there, but you make sure that you are doing this in a secure way. This is the only problem. Mm -hmm. uh, one more thing regarding the collectors is that I don't have the hands-on expertise, but I saw that if there is emerging standards called OPAMP for the collectors orchestration. Okay. And it may be also a good idea to deep dive and see because it's uh, I saw one uh, at least one tool called uh, Bind Plane from Observe IQ, which implements the, the, this protocol, and it could be helpful to uh, I don't know inject or let's say orchestrate the the collectors. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I I would I would imagine uh, hotel standards and things would have simpler way or at least more more standard is a bad way but at least like already tested way uh, of of deploying this and i think one of this is how do we want to deploy the backends and how we want to deploy the collectors uh, that's the that's one of the questions on this particular uh, issues is that um uh, whoever takes on this would 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 make a make a proposal design proposals on um our nephew management clusters and, and world clusters relationships uh, how would you want to deploy the collectors, um, and then and then and then a good way to well a bring it up, so it becomes and then how design to to bring up to bring it up part, to bring it up uh, as part of um, um, nephew instantiations, and also obviously all the once you get to the second one, understanding how to get the data back, um, making sure that all the all the secure channels and things are set up. So that uh, the deployment of backends and things could could then gather data um, from all the workload clusters. So, so those are basically just part of this overall story um, that that I, I sort of pictured. Obviously, there's a lot of details that haven't been filled up. Yeah, indeed, it's it's really big task. I'm not sure if it should be the responsible responsibility of one person to decide on the architecture how you will use the collectors i mean if you would like to I, i'm not sure if it is if this is a goal but if you would like to let's say uh create some standards in nephew how to inject or orchestrate the collectors and uh, how to define the flow between them what collectors mm -hmm. what exporters and maybe what processor to use in the open telemetry framework mm -hmm. it's it should be discussed more broadly uh, mm -hmm. and at the end just like you said the security is also the aspect mm -hmm. of this task but not everyone is expert in the open telemetry and mm -hmm. security at the same time so mm -hmm. it should be joint work of few people right if you will have few people of course <laughs> very few people yeah well i mean so so this is needed for the for our subgroup so our subgroup would have to make a proposal but I do agree that the proposal needs to obviously it always has to go back to SIG2 general audience to say this is our findings, this is our proposal, this is what we're going to implement. And also, it seems like we have to go through security SIG to make sure that this is um, this actually again adhere to the standards that we should have as a project. Yeah, good point. So I, 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 I may have a question. I don't know. It's just open question or the question to i'm sorry i don't remember uh, who was from the six security but right. 
So the, the question is, if this is really a part of the observability concern, or we assume that there is a safe mechanism to interact between clusters, and we would like to just put this requirement for the SIG security, and then we are here. I mean, if SIG mm -hmm. security succeeds, we only care to deploy the observability, or we need to have a joint work. This is the question of the statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that so, was the so, question I asked Rahu too. Whether or not the how has been this it's been discussed, and then if it is, yeah, 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 perhaps we should leverage. Go ahead, Rahul. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can share you some highlights up to about just in the last week. Right, there was a discussion that happened. Today, there's going to be a major update. Uh, uh, today, today morning PST time. Uh, or tomorrow morning PST time uh, is, is is there's going to be a, another discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, uh, you know, we the, we we are trying to understand. So before getting any of this work done, right? Like we have to have a notion of workload identity in the first place, because without that identity, you can't have authorization. So we are discussing what is that model going to look like? How will it scale across multiple clusters? Uh, what is it that we can do so that users don't have to actually or, or the workloads don't have to themselves change. Uh, so there are a bunch of requirements that we have identified in the context. I, I'll share a slide deck there. Like, like I said, you know, we are currently trying to identify the model that will work. And there is also discussion about some of the, the, the moving parts that might get used under the hood. Like Spiffy is something that is getting actively discussed for establishing the work identity itself. Uh, once we have that thing in place, then everything else sits on top of it. For example, it would be its secrets management, be it service mesh, be it the ability to for a workload cluster to export data to management cluster. All of this sits on top of it, right? Like so, mm -hmm. uh, uh, right now we are in the discussion where we are proposing a model. Hopefully, by the next week, we'll be sending a proposal to RX Scope uh, team so that we can we can discuss whether at a high level this model makes sense. And if yes, it makes sense, then we'll go for a reference implementation. That's the plan as of now. Haven't having said that, I'll just share the slide deck that we presented in the last uh, call so that you you can identify about what the requirements are going to be. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So if we have that, we can build on top of it. But then at this point, um, in terms of execution, we are we're looking at a POC phase <laughs> for ourselves. Um, so we can actually we I don't know we, if we know what the requirements are yet, uh, even for us um, observability. So I, I, I would I would encourage that let's let's try to investigate uh, and 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 then build a more simplistic POC with. I don't want to say no concern about security, but at least assuming the security aspects of it is 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 going to be taken care of by someone else, um, then we will will first build uh, our POC to see uh, what is needed and 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 um, what kind of security measures and authentications uh, uh, things that we are we are needed, um, and they may they may be able to actually directly give more requirements and things uh, to to security sake also. Thank you. Rahul. Yep. So that's that's another big piece, as you said. Um, all of this, uh, I think, the one part that at least a uh, very few of us agreed on is um, we'll be using the open telemetry interface um, for uh, to expose to instrumentations uh, for. Doing any installations and things if it's already available using the hotel collectors if appropriate, um, and then you know if there's some built-in Kubernetes things from hotel we can leverage um, things. So we we would like to have at least several folks in the subgroup that uh, that that would get to be very good at understanding the hotel, and then. Uh, and then, and then be able to see how we can a conform to it because we don't we have no we have no appetite to create our own standards in Nephew. Uh and b uh, how is it useful in terms of all the all the uh, other things other tool chains that they already created. Um, so this is one task that encompasses a bunch of other um, stories in place. 
Um, but then, you know, folks that are doing this could be focusing on just graphing data first. Uh, and then in terms of exposing it, um, uh, once we get a very good read on how to how to use the OTEL pieces, then we can we can um, we can have a design uh, and 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 PLCs on that piece also. And the next one is the operator. The NF operator should be able to somehow get the data uh, from our framework uh, to make a decision on whether or not it's is satisfying the intent. Um, so this is a channel that um, isn't so. So one thing we obviously want to avoid is the operator going back to management clusters. Uh, if if you only put Prometheus there, for example, and then and then fetch the data from Prometheus on management cluster. So we want to we want to see if there's a mechanism through OTEL or some other means that we can we can gather um, visibility data uh, in the workload clusters directly from a NF operators. Um, it could be other things that runs on 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 workload clusters too. So basically, it's a workload cluster accessibility of the data of the data, um, and then how to subscribe, how to get it, how to stream it. Um, that's that's part of this uh, story slash task. Also, uh, go ahead, Pietro. So I think this is uh, kind of probably challenging task. I mean, because you would like to, if I understood well, we would like to define some generic way to expose data for the network functions or the operators mm -hmm. or some other entities. And it's not that. Mm -hmm. So something, something like, because... uh, yeah, something like when we're streaming the, the metrics over to, to Prometheus running on, say, management cluster, uh, and then it doesn't need to be the same stream, but then, but then, and then, but then the NF operators for those for metrics that are that are that are essential to this network functions, they will be able to specify well also access access control. So obviously, vendor A would not be able to read vendor B's uh, metrics <laughs> uh, on on the workload clusters. Um, so and 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 be able to gather those data uh, uh, on f through through some means. So, so we would. So this this particular story is about having um, something on wearable clusters, and then primarily the NF operators uh, to be able to access um, the data um, locally um, on the um, because the operator obviously is not NF. So the NF and the Kubernetes clusters are all having data, and then and then the operator should be able to access that. Yes, it's probably easier when you assume that uh, operator will access the data which will be defined to collect mm -hmm. by the vendor. But what about metrics which are not vendor specific? Then you still need some some way to expose it in a generic way. Mm -hmm. So you need some standard that That's right. this API will be on the place. I don't know if this is the scope of this task force to define something like that? Do you see this? Or it's too far to think about that at this point? To yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's kinda hard to know we're not. So so for sure, we don't, so we, Nephew is not a standard body. <laughs> so we are, we're not, we're not, we're not creating a standard. In the context of Nephew, the software project, um, for NF operators, for example, that are written for Nephew, um, they should have a uniform uh, mechanisms to um, to subscribe to some visibility data that are being exposed by the network functions or the infrastructure and the infrastructure. So that's that's what we're asking for, basically in this case. So other the the, the big thing is so so the other uh, NF operators written commercially would be able to access that data also. Yeah, so Nephew generally relies on many standards and even in the observability, probably you have the open telemetry, but it's the way to collect the data. Mm -hmm. There is no definition how to expose them. I mean, what API should be exposed in the context of pre 5G, uh, 5G core, 5G run or something like that. Mm -hmm. The question is if there are any standards I know that there are the defined KPIs in the, in the standardization, but 
it's not all, it will probably not the case that a vendor will have only such metrics mm -hmm. but i know it's it, it's not a trivial to discuss at this moment yeah so so in this in this case i would imagine right the the nf um the nf vendor the operator who's written by an vendor uh, would be subscribing to to metrics that they know about so we're not we're not talking about standardizing metrics meanings that oh we uh, uh, if you're a 5G, if you're UPF, you must expose XYZ metrics. So, so we're not looking at that. We, we're looking for um, a mechanisms for the network function op the network function operators to say, oh, if I want to get metrics uh, from my network functions, um, other than you know pretending like I'm Prometheus <laughs> that reads on the service port, the service monitoring port, um, is there some ways for us to get uh, this set of metrics uh, uh, from this group of network functions that I'm I'm currently managing, uh, and then and 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 you know if you if we can specify that on more like an API type manners, and then and then and then as as a framework we'll be able to expose that um, at the very least. Taking it from more of a free five GC perspective because it's it's not available, <laughs> so 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 from there we sh we have to implement something to do this. Um, mm -hmm. and whether or not that becomes a standard or whether or not the, the community accepts it uh, in terms of the vendor communities. Um, we welcome a vendor community to come in and say um, uh, whether or not there's, they, they want that same mechanisms to be able to actually do it for their commercial products too. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But in terms of a implementation perspective, we, need, we do need something. One last comment from my side, because I mm -hmm. remembered a few months ago, uh, mm -hmm. Wim Hendricks, he had interesting idea about creating some normalization layer between to, to mm -hmm. be able to use some metrics between the vendors, I mean, to be vendor agnostic. I never had the discussion with him regarding that. How? Yeah, yeah that was that was a uh, that was an earlier that was an earlier version, uh, earlier vision, I would say that there is a standard set of uh, KPI that we can define. Where, where upon which all the vendors should support. I think that is such a large discussion uh, for that, that goes way beyond, I would even discover of Nephew really. Um, so, so I would, I would probably, well, so, so the idea would be once you get them, once you get a KPI, which is KPI X equals to this set of metrics from vendor B and this other, other set of metrics of vendor, a, vendor, vendor A and vendor B, and then, and then when they're providing some sort of functions and things that I would be able to take all those metrics and calculate uh, uh, the, the same standard KPIs. Um, I think that's actually, it's a good idea. It's just, it's just that it's, it's, as the discussion goes, I just don't know whether or not this is within what we're supposed to do. Um, I would love to see that, but, uh, but then I don't, I don't think it's, a, it's much of a conversation starter <laughs> at this point. Um, I mean, let's get the framework going and get an implementation and reference going. Just the same way that we did R1, I guess, in a way for deployment um, that we'll, we'll, we are building the CLDs as we go. We're building, we're, we're building what is possible and, and the intermediate uh, uh, pipelines, the hydration pipeline, for example, as we go on. Um, and then, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. <laughs> yeah, because we're not, you know, it's kind of hard for us to set standards, although they're not standards. They're, they, they're nephew API still, but then at this point, whether or not this is really needed, uh, it's more of like a northbound problem. If an application comes in and said that, I expect you to have KPI X, Y, and Z, uh, and every every vendor should su should support that KPI, um, no. <laughs> that the application should convince them. <laughs> I think more than that, more than anything. So if the if it comes to day where framework needs to do something like you know, gathering different diverse set of metrics and normalize it uh, using some sort of normalization functions uh, that are provided by individual vendors. Uh, we can have the framework, but I don't think we're there yet. Murata, sorry, you, your hand's been raised for a long time. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's over time. No issue. Uh, for uh, Metis, uh, I think uh, Nephew modeling, you know, might be a good place to start uh, where, you know, they try to standardize. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, basically why I raised uh, the uh, hand is because Steven, this is an excellent uh, story because 
you are telling observability is going to consolidate also in the management cluster or at some place, but it's very important if the consumer observability is in the same workload, mm -hmm. we have to have some mechanism to access it. So in that way, it is an excellent uh, distributed uh, story. That was my comment, Steve. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, let's let's get there. <laughs> um, I get, as as uh, Varada said, we we're kind of on time, so so the next couple ones are not anything. Uh, I think you know if you folks have time, go ahead and click on it, so we we shouldn't go too too much over time. Um, and I guess the biggest thing I would like to ask is obviously, um, folks starting to take what you're interested, uh, and 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 um, and start investigating. Because as you can see from my my descriptions, I'm everything is very open ended at this point. So I would I would encourage uh, interested contributors to take on tasks or the whole story even, um, and then and then hopefully get a couple more people to help out for each story, um, and then and then kind of investigate and design uh, what kind of approach and directions that we're going, um, and then and then we'll together we'll build. Um, a POC. We'll, we'll communicate that further with the community, obviously, uh, and then and then also build a POC to prove that uh, what we're doing, what we what we're thinking of doing, is actually working. So, so that's the uh, that's the big that's the that's the big ask of this. So, so if you're interested, uh, please do so. Uh, if there's any other things that you want to raise, uh, you can raise it on Slack. Uh, and so far, I set this up for a weekly meeting, so so we can we can we can talk again next week. But then in the meantime, if there's any questions on any items, or if you're interested to take on items, uh, we can talk about that on Slack. OK. Any other? Okay, thank things? you very much. <laughs> thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Love it. Bye.